my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. This is a channel where I typically talk a lot about what books I'm reading as well as homeschool, mostly book related. Today's video is a homeschooling video, but it's a little bit different. It's not geared towards homeschool parents. It's geared towards parents who send their students more to public school and that they are now home due to the closures due to coronavirus. That is homeschool. It's school at home. And so what I want to talk about in this video is some of the things I have learned over the past two years of homeschooling my kids. Currently, I have a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and twin two-year-olds, and I've been homeschooling since my oldest was four, so two years. And I've learned a lot about more about the management. So that's what this video is going to be more about, is about some of my tips for, for managing some of the chaos, some of the systems I've put in place, things to think about, attitudes to kind of try and have, and not so much like curriculum or anything like that, because I know that the schools have sent home a lot of different work plans or various things for your kiddos during this break time. Break time. So let me just hop in. So my first tip I would say for schooling at home when you're not used to it is flexibility. Be flexible. Be willing to try stuff, try different locations, try different times, and then be willing to reassess. Be okay with things maybe not working. It's okay to push through a little bit, but then just to be like, okay, well maybe this just isn't, isn't a good fit for our current family, our current house, the age of my kids, if we have babies, toddlers, things like that. And so flexibility, I think, would be the first thing as you're just getting used to having them home and as you get used to being their teacher. So that's kind of the first tip and I might swing back by because that's one of the most important. Tip two I would say is don't expect an easy transition. One, just because your kids have viewed your home as more of a fun place or a place to relax, a place to decompress after school and it's going to be hard for them to um, adjust right away. And what's recommended to a lot of people who decide to homeschool, who decide to take their kids out of public school is like a chunk of unschooling where they kind of just get used to being home and then you ramp up with your homeschool, which is obviously not something that you can do in this situation. But I would say expect some pushback, set loose schedules. I've heard some people talk about how they're gonna have their whole day scheduled and this is how it's gonna work. And I'm like, oh boy, you haven't tried to wrangle these kids in a very functional structured manner such as school and it's it's harder than that. So loose schedule is what I would say. Also be willing to do school in totally different places. It doesn't just have to be the kitchen table or a desk. It can be the backyard picnic table. It can be the couch. It can be a bed. It can be the floor. Let your kids lead that a little bit because if they lead where they want to be, they're more likely to do it. Also under this, like it might not go as expected. I'd say if you're having a really bad day, what I've learned is you just sometimes it's okay just to stop. Take a break. Go outside. Go play. Go for a bike ride and then start back up. And nine times out of 10, I feel like my kids will just start back up. They'll be like, oh, this isn't that big of a deal where like an hour ago, it was the biggest deal in the world. So I would, I would recommend that as the ability to start and stop. So my tip three is I would say to fit school into your normal home routines. So you have other things you're doing. You have laundry, you have normal breakfast times, you have normal nap times if you have younger kids, things like that. That is your structure of your day fit schooling around that. Fit where you're going to get these assignments done from their teachers around your normal day. Because one, your kids probably have a loose idea of what your normal day is. I would say that is some of the most helpful advice I have gotten in the past, is just to be honest about your schedule and not try and have this whole elaborate thing that's going to be hard for you to uphold and hard for them to uphold. So tip four would be have a plan for your preschoolers or toddlers or babies if you have them. If you don't, you can move on to the next tip. But this is one of the hardest things about schooling at home, is that you also usually, a lot of times, have younger siblings involved. And those younger siblings, one, have been used to you all the time. Two, they're just rambunctious and they get into things and you just have to have things for them to do. You have to have a plan. I have done it where I have tried to like, oh, it'll be fine, they'll just entertain themselves. and. It never goes well. I don't know what, they get into so many things. And so, yeah, I would say have a plan. So what we're currently doing, if you just want an example, obviously you don't have to do this, is we, I have bins, Monday through Friday bins, that I have stored away that are kind of locked 
away in a closet that they don't have access to, so these toys are only played with during schooling time. And I don't, I'm not saying go rush out and buy a lot of new toys. We just had a bunch of toys in rotation and we just took the toys that were out of rotation and put them in a bunch of bins. And it's worked so far. By the time Monday rolls back around, it's, it's fairly interesting again. What's also been really helpful for me is to think about your bigger kids as helpful for your little kids. So what I'll do is I'll kind of set them in rotation. When I'm working with my oldest, I will have my middle child work with the twins. So she'll be upstairs playing with them, doing the, that bin I was just talking about. And I have a monitor so I can watch and um, listen to them as they play. She can tell me if they've decided to take their diapers off or something ridiculous. And so it's really helpful to kind of rotate in and out the big kids and then just pick and choose what are the most important things you need to do with your big kids for school. What do you need to teach them? If it's like a new math concept, um, but if it's handwriting and some worksheets, they can do those independently. So you just kind of pick and choose your pockets of what's the most important like teacher intensive time for you to be with them and then try and structure some rotation time with the, the younger kids. So that has really worked for us and that is probably one of the more challenging things about schooling at home is siblings. Fifth tip is to keep a distinction between weekdays and weekends for your kids. So what I'd like to do here is that I have different expectations of them and obviously you already have kind of a school routine, like get out the door school routine in place. Try not to lose that. Try not to let them sleep in too much or do too much unstructuredness because that reminds them more of the weekends and things like that. And you don't want them kind of to be feeling like this is weekend because then they'll push back even more because they're like, well, that's why are we doing school? And so if you kind of keep them on their normal schedule, like you must get up and brush teeth or whatever it is for you guys, eat breakfast, and then we're gonna start school after that. Um, or we're gonna then break up and, and do schoolwork in different areas of the house. Whatever it is going to work for you, but keep that kind of schedule for weekdays and then loosen it up for weekends so there's a difference. So like for, for our family, chores happen during the weekdays. They don't happen on the weekends. That's just the way I'd like to distinguish it. And it's more like their extra family chores, not their brushing teeth and stuff. Obviously they do that every day, but to kind of keep some of those distinctions is really helpful because it gets them in the right frame of mind to do school. The sixth tip I would like to say is, it's kind of a, a two-part tip, but it's one is model what you want for them. So for instance, if you would like them to do kind of sustained silent reading, do it with them. I've even set up the kids who can't read, like my four-year-old, and I'll set her with a pile of books that she's just gonna look through. The twins, the two-year-old twins are a little harder, but they'll still kind of look at books or I'll read books to them. But it's nice if like I can read my book and my son can read his book and we can just kind of have this practiced time and if I'm doing it, they're more likely to do it and I really like that. And then the second part of this tip would be more so don't feel like you have to do everything. So yes, they do art. Yes, they do PE. Yes, they do all these amazing things in school, but it's okay if they don't craft for four weeks or something like that. If crafting and glue and all that just makes you too crazy, just let that go. They'll be fine. Um, and But maybe give them some more independent art time or something like where they can still be creative, where they can still not just do the most important things like math and phonics and grammar and all those things, but that they still have some beauty in their day, some things that they're looking forward to. My last tip, it comes back to just be flexible. I would say that's probably the one that's made the most difference is the ability to be flexible, the ability to put aside my need for plans and organizing and a super clean house and just be flexible, be able to roll with what is happening, what they're needing, how chaotic is it, um, and just roll with it. And then also for, for me personally, I obviously have stuff I have to do, laundry, cooking, meal planning. I tend to try and do those in the afternoon and focus more on school time in the morning, but that's preference. But in the end, I would say like it's a short period and you, your mom first or dad first, whoever's watching this, and teacher second. So as, even though you're taking on something that might be a little overwhelming and your kids are going to push back on it a bit, you're still their parents and yeah, they might not get as much learning done in however long the schools are closed, but that's okay. They'll be okay. You'll be okay. 
do the best job you can. And, and I hope these tips have been helpful. These are the kinds of things that have helped me the most on kind of my day-to-day -day handling and managing myself as well as the kids and the house. So please let me know if, if those tips make sense. If you have more to add, please add those in the comments and other people can also learn and we can kind of start a discussion about just ideas, ideas for what to do when something like this happens. So please consider also subscribing to my channel. I know I said I do mostly books and homeschool, but if you like to, to listen to what people are reading, I really enjoy sharing that. So please feel free to, to subscribe and um, homeschool content if you're interested in that as well. But thank you so much for stopping by and taking the time to watch this video. Okay, good luck and um, have a good day. All right, take care.